to dress up. You want to dress up. Well, I want to dress up for God. Amen. amen. This is my best dress for the Lord. Amen. amen. My robe. Amen. And his righteousness. Amen. amen. Let me invite you to a book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Stand with me, please. Psalms 46, verse 10. If you have that passage of scripture, say amen. If you don't, just amen. say wait. Amen. That's just after Job and before Proverbs. Amen. 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 He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. He says, be still. What do you do when it's out of your hands? Many of us have faced situations and trials and tribulations when it is just completely out of your hands. Amen. Amen. And there's nothing in your humanity that you can possibly do. I found my very self wrestling with this. What am I going to do? It is completely out of my hands. And there's nothing in the situation at hand that I can do. But the Lord says, be still. Which means relax. Surrender. Give it up. Because you're going to mess it up anyway. All right. Amen? Amen. Give, it up. Give it up, he says. Relax. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. And I will be exalted among the heathen. Heathen translation, non-believers. In the presence of your enemies, I'm going to show them even the non-believer, mm -hmm. that I am Jesus Christ. I will do exactly what I promise. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 I'm here before you this morning as a messenger from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus Christ. I cannot emphasize enough that this plane rod, there's going to be some turbulence. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I want you to hold on right now. Eliminate the distractions in your mind. I want you to go to that place of complete attention. Put your seatbelts on. There's no walking at this time on the plane. Amen. 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 All right. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many of you know that our God is able to do above and exceeding all we can think or ask for? Yes. Amen. 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 How many of you know this? Yes. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You see, the enemy didn't want me to get this message out to you this morning. He tried to take my roof off, which is my breath of breathing. Hebrew translation of breath is ruach. Holy Spirit. But how many of you know my testimony is God is. God is able. Yes. And, I, and if I can just have a, a, a raise of hands to show how many situations have you had where you can say, God is able and a present help. Amen? Yes. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6, chapter verses 12. He tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh -huh. It wasn't just a coincidence that I'm in the emergency room because I cannot breathe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you yeah. find this a coincidence? No. Jesus, I'm here to deliver a message all right. for Amen. you all. Amen? Amen. In Amen. obedience of my heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Because we're running out of time and you don't want to miss your connection to the Amen. next flight. Amen. Jesus. All right. We're going somewhere. Amen. Jesus. Yes. The title of my sermon today is Ruha. 
Everybody say, Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Jesus. What is the meaning, Hebrew word? Ruha. Pronounced Ruha. R O O for the scholars in here. A K H. Amen? It is the Hebrew word for spirit, breath, or wind. When spoken, the word engages one's breath and lungs. You can't say Ooh, without using your lungs, mm -hmm. expanding your lungs. Amen? Amen. And the first mention of Ruha in the Bible is the very first chapter of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it says, To be exact, and today I want to talk to you about a common enemy. Excuse me. Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. I want to get ahead of myself. Turn with me to Genesis. It's faithful. How many of you just want to say relax? Mm. Tell your neighbor, relax. You're always in a hurry to go somewhere, do something, to have this prayer answered. Just relax. Tell your neighbor, relax. Jesus.
Yes. Yeah. How I many of you know when you're on a flight, sometimes it takes a while to get to your destination? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tread just a little carefully so that you don't miss anything. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The, the, the primary spiritual force of attacking the church today is the same one that the Apostle Paul faced. In Zechariah 4 and 6, it tells us, not by our might, but, the, but his spirit. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and ask, what kingdom are you welcoming? This is important. What kingdom are you welcoming? What atmosphere are you inviting or entertaining? The Lord's presence with your praise and your worship and your studying? Or are you setting up the stage for the enemy to come in and his enemies? What kingdom are you entertaining? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Are you complaining and bickering and backbiting and backstabbing and yelling and arguing and speaking death instead of speaking life? Amen. As they tell us in the book of James that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Amen. Jesus. I don't care what situation you're facing today. I don't care what it looks like. The battle has already been won. Amen. Our Heavenly Father and life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% of how we react. Mm. I want to give you some powerful insights today. The Lord has given me in overcoming the attacks of the enemy and walking in victory. Yes. From the very beginning and its opening pages in Genesis again. When to go back to the snake in the Garden of Eden, the devil operated as a snake. I want to take my time because I want to make sure you get this. Sometimes we go fast, and you ever been in a class where they're going so fast and you miss the step to do the math problem and you just cannot catch up or get it? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take my time. Yeah. Jesus, God be the glory. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You see, the devil operated like a snake, a python snake to be specific in the way he tries to infiltrate his way around the lives of believers as he slowly crawls around them. We hardly know this when suddenly we just can't believe it. What are you anxious about? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, so what are you anxious about? For God said, be anxious for nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. He already took care of it. He said, relax. Amen? Yeah. Come with me to Acts chapter 16 and the 16th verse. Jesus. Jesus. Very important. Some turbulence happening here. Oh, and it came to pass as we went into prayer, a certain damsel, King James Version, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, with, which bore her masters much gain by a suit saying. Now I'm going to read to you Young's Living Translation why I'm talking about this snake that coils and wraps its way around you. We got to stay woke. Mm. Jesus. All right. It reads in the Young's Living Translation, Acts 16, verse 16 through 18 reads, And it came to pass, and now going into prayer, a certain maid having a spirit of python, mm. Did meet us who brought much employment to her masters by truth saying. Most translations record that this woman was possessed with the spirit of divination, but in Young's literal translation, we see another name for the spirit called Python. This was the only time the name of an unclean spirit was given in the books of Acts. Could it be that our Heavenly Father? Wanted us to understand that there's a python that wants to coil itself around us? Yeah. Have you ever felt like you just want to throw in the towel? Mm -hmm. If we're being transparent, I know we're Christians in here and yeah. we don't have any problems and all is well. All is well. My God, my <laughs> God, just <laughs> being true. honest, and if we live long enough, you will face trials and tribulations. Yeah. It's yeah. inevitable. Because we are children of the Most High. Yes. And we have an assignment. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Jesus. 
Jesus. Yeah. And study I learned about a captive by Burmese python at a serpent safari park named Baby. You want to say Baby? Baby. This python baby was 27 feet long and over 400 pounds. And that's what's happening in the spiritual world now today in the churches and the families on the jobs. That python steak is coming in wrapping itself around the Christian faith in the churches. Look at the churches today. They're not full. They're not packed. But if you go to a nightclub, come on, let's talk about it, somebody. Jesus, what kingdom are we entertaining? I'm not going to apologize to anyone because I don't want to entertain certain kingdoms. Amen? Because I'm on a assignment and I want to get to my next destination. But there's a lot of turbulence on this plane. Y'all don't hear me. There's a lot of turbulence on this plane. Amen. Jesus. All right. Which kingdom Which king? are you entertaining and why? What is it fulfilling for you? Jesus. Taste and see. My God. Have you ever just tasted and seen? When the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, grips you. When you're reading and the pages illuminate and they talk to you. Yes. Because yes. Jesus always has something to say to us. Yes, but are we listening? Mm. Are we engaging? Mm. A lot of times I notice when I face trials and tribulations and I felt I can't go on. Mm. How am I going to do this, God? It was because my Bible was dusty. <laughs> but I want God to answer my prayers and it's right, right. here. In front of my face. Yes, yes. There's turbulence on this plane. And people are panicking like they panicked. When Peter, they were on the boat. And Jesus was asleep. And they were panicking. Y'all remember that? Yeah, they were. The winds and the waves. Jesus was relaxed. Be still. Psalms 46 and 10. Be still. Relax. Jesus, Jesus. I want to talk about this Burmese python. Now keep in mind now these Burmese pythons, they're not native to the U.S. They were imported from Asia. And there's that. These Burmese python, huge demonic snakes, were imported from Asia as people's personal pets. They're pets. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have pet demons, you just won't let go of. You just keep going back to that pet demon that's taking your soul into damnation. Hello, Spencer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. They want a Burmese python as a pet. And National Geographic published an article about the corpse of a of the 17 foot python. And this 17 foot python had a world history of 164 eggs. It had left behind after it had died. And that's what's happening spiritually. That's what the devil does. And he has these little imps, these little pet demons that you can't fight, that you keep going back to. Mm -hmm. But he said, have a renewed mind and a renewed spirit. Right. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Renew yes. your, a right spirit. Yes. Jesus, right spirit. a clean heart. Yes. Sometimes it's hard. Yes. But renew me a clean spirit. Yes. A right heart. Yes. So I can do your work. Now here's a caveat for you. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas were walking to the place of prayer when the spirit of the python interrupted them. He interrupted them then. The spirit of the python. And I believe the enemy operates the same way today. He will interrupt your prayer and your praise yeah. and you will always encounter an attack of the enemy just before the Lord shows up. This is where so many Christians, hold on, there's turbulence right now. Hold on, hold on, put your seatbelt 
young man, put your seatbelt back on. Jesus. Jesus. This is where many Christians give up before the blessing. Mm. They give up on their marriages. They give up on that class they needed to graduate. They give up on that dream to start a new business. Yeah. They give up on that wayward child. They give up when they get diagnosed with cancer or un some unforeseenable diagnosis that they just don't know what to do. But God said, be still. Be still. Be still. Relax. I got this. I'm a warrior king. I'm not some peasant that can't fight your battles. Haven't I proven to you this? Time after time after time. I just want to now for 90 minutes from now, y'all gonna be cursing the chair and all. My God, Jesus. Because we'll forget. We'll forget. And I'm talking to me too. We'll forget what we just prayed God about. We'll forget that he's going to deliver us through that situation. Yes, that seems so hard. Uh -huh. But we just praise God in the sanctuary for a few hours. And then when we leave church, we are going with our spouse. Yeah. Yelling at our way with children. And yeah. demonstrating love. Because sometimes they, they don't live only by what they see. Yeah. They're not coming to church because they're watching you. Yeah. Carry it on. Why would I want to go to church? They just like us in the world. Uh -huh. yeah. Why? What makes them different? They have problems too. Let me tell you what makes us different as Christians when you say, I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. We now have a covering. It doesn't mean that we're perfect. I heard Pastor talk about sanctification. The process is ongoing. The only person that had it all right was Jesus. We can't keep all the commandments all the time, but we have a gift of repentance. Repentance. Jesus. This is the stage. The enemy shows up in the middle of your praise. God. He comes in like a python, trying to make you give up on that family member who may be strung out on drugs, who may be strung out on alcohol, who may have a sex addiction, who may have pornography issue, addiction. Anything with addiction is not good. Jesus, nothing good comes of the flesh. It's never going to be fulfilling. You'll never be fulfilled. Amen. The only thing you'll be fulfilled is when Jesus invites that Holy Spirit in your life. Yeah. And he comforts you and he holds you when your soul is crying. Yes. I know. Jesus. You know. You've experienced this. The only one who can comfort you. Jesus. You don't have to look for him. He's always there. Yes, he Amen. Come on. He said, don't be anxious for anything. My girlfriend and I went on a trip to Greece. She's sitting here with us. She can attest to you. We were a little anxious because the human nature, we're about to miss our transfer flight and get back home. We have a few minutes. We're getting interrogated. Why are you here? Why did you come? Did you get anything? Did you, what room do you stay in? What do you do for a living? And we're like, okay. Makes your heart rate go up a little bit because you want to get back home. But Jesus said, relax. <laughs> relax. Be still. I got this. And I got you too. Amen. Jesus. 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 You see, if Satan cannot stop you from receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what he's going to do, his plan is to make you Feel defeated. Mm. That's his plan. Make you feel defeated. But the good news is you have the power to defeat him. You don't have to stay in that same situation, that same mindset that's toxic for your soul. Amen. You can give it all up. It up. Nobody's going to judge you. Yeah. They don't have a right to judge. Jesus, our heavenly 
Heavenly Father. That's who you worry about. Right. Not what people and naysayers think. They're always going to have something to say. Amen. Amen? No matter what Amen. you do, whether you do it right, do it wrong, some people you just can't please them. And Amen. we have to learn to stop being people pleasers and God pleasers. Amen. 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 Talking to somebody today. Amen. Yes, sir. Jesus, Amen. Jesus. You see, in Acts 16 and 25, we find Paul and Cephas at midnight. <laughs> at midnight. This time is particularly important. A lot of activity happens at midnight spiritually. Mm. But that's another sermon. We're going to stay on track here because this plane has a certain destination and we don't want to miss our connection. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. So at midnight, Paul and Silas in Acts 16 were yes. singing praises after they were arrested. They were arrested mm. and beaten. For challenging the woman possessed with the spirit of the python. All right. Notice it reads, after they went to jail and was beaten and praising God. I love this scripture. It encourages me that this is how we need to be. This was a, a, a perfect example model for us to show us how to act when we come out of trials and tribulation, yeah. not be murmuring and complaining, look what happened to me, I can't believe I went through this, oh yeah. God, why yeah. me, why not you, That's right. you called, yeah. you chose it, yeah. that's a badge of honor, it was a badge of honor when I went to the emergency room and couldn't breathe, okay God, I surrender, my spirit is good, Amen. I told my fiance, my soul is good, yeah. something happens to me, I know where I'm going, Amen. but do you know where you're in the pardon of your sins. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Amen. Jesus, That's Jesus. Amen. Jesus, this plane has some place to go. You see, midnight in scripture is always a type of coming of the Lord in the last days. Python tried to stop Paul and Cephas just before God showed up. Amen? Amen. And this story in Acts 15 reveals a lot about why praise and power is powerful. Why prayer and praise yeah. is power, and the presence of the Holy Spirit gives it more power, and it's vital for our spiritual life. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. you see, the Word of God is alive, it says, in sharp. Amen? And what does it do to us? It pierces it. the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It discerns the thoughts of and intentions of the heart. Only God can do that. We can put on a mask, don't get fooled by this Mac makeup. Amen? Amen. We can put on a mask, but God sees the intent of our hearts. Yes, he Amen? Yes. And our motives. Yes. No. Yeah. It goes below the surface. The word does supernatural work inside of us. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 to 13, mm -hmm. reminds us to read his daily word. Read it daily. They call it the daily bread, right? Amen. Because we're supposed to read it daily. He has something to tell us. Are you allowing the word to penetrate and permeate your soul? Are you daily soaking up his word? Are you reading it? Are you meditating on it? Are you letting it do that sharp penetration in your heart to transform you and to root out all that's not of Christ in you? Jesus. Sanctification is an ongoing process. I heard what pastor friend say. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, activation, purpose, and provision. Some of you are in the activation stage. Some of you are going through provision that God is going to perform in your life. He said, relax, be still. He's going to do that. Jesus. And some of you have to understand your purpose. He's going to reveal that to you. Says, be still. Sit in his presence and be still. That's not a time where you're talking. You're just listening. Amen. That's why God gave us two ears to listen. But we're so busy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know it all. Help us, Father. Yeah. Help us, Father. Yes, Jesus, Help. Jesus, Jesus. You see, have any of you heard of hair perms for horse hair? Mm -hmm. You know, the hair perms. And, and, and you understand that you can put that hair perm on your hair. And some of them now are lie or, or no lie. But there's this thing called the activation liquid. <laughs> and without the activation liquid, the hair still ain't right. It still is not right. It still causes right. It don't work. Right. It's right. still naughty. <laughs>
shea butter cream relaxer That's right. shea and butter. activate a lip liquid. <laughs> Jesus, do we need it? Say it again for those that are more paying attention. We need multiple apps applications of the activator. Yeah. Amen. 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 Of the word being deposited into our spirit. But most of us are walking around with the negative account balance in our spiritual accounts. Mm -hmm. Jesus, help us bouncing all kinds of checks. Mm -hmm. Jesus, are you fighting internal battles that seem to be getting the best of you? Mm -hmm. There was a time when heart attack were killing people mm -hmm. because they didn't know the symptoms to look out for. I'm a nurse, so I'm going to talk about medical as well. People didn't know the symptoms of a heart attack, so by the time they found out, it was already too late. Right? It was already too late. Here's some more turbulence for you. It's a caveat. Jesus. But then medical advancement started teaching us to teach the public what to watch out for. Signs and symptoms of a heart attack. Warning signs such as Discomfort in the center of your chest. Mm. Pain in one or both arms. Shortness of breath. So spreading awareness of the warning signs had greatly increased the survival rate, right? Mm. For heart attack victims. Mm. Well, in a similar manner, many Christians seem to be blindsided by spiritual attacks. So it's crucial to recognize what? The warning signs of spiritual attacks for what? Your survival. Amen? Jesus, Jesus, I've got just six bullets that I want to hit on, and I'm going to land this plane. Amen? Is that all right, Charles? Amen. I want you to write these six things down. Because if you find yourself in one of these six categories, I assure you, you need a spiritual deposit into your account because it's going into the negative, and you're bouncing all kinds of mess and mess that you cannot fix. Tell your neighbor, you can't fix this. You can't fix this. Only God can fix this. We mess it up. Jesus, Jesus. The six bullets. Lack of spiritual desire. Number one. Physical fatigue despite getting rest. Physical fatigue. Imagine that. You're so tired physically and emotionally. You're broke down. Oh my God. Why am I so Jesus. Number three, feeling overwhelmed or hopeless. Again, every failure that I felt I had was when I had a dusty Bible. Amen? A dusty Bible. Number four, a lack of tact. There's never enough. You got holes in your pocket. Perhaps you're not tithing and trusting God with your faith. And then maybe you would have had a hole in your pocket. It's tight, but it's right. I'm a living witness to know that tithing is right. It never makes sense. It never adds up. But when you give your first fruits to the Lord, we give 20% to a restaurant waitress, but we can't give 10% to the house of God where we're getting fed spiritually to live for our souls. Number four, 
that he will supply all of our needs, not just some. It says all. I'm referring back to the word of God. And everything in the word is true and correct and not void. Amen? Amen. That's right. Jesus. This one is very important. Number five. Everyone say number five. Number five. I want to keep y'all engaged like they do in school because I used to fall asleep to some right. teachers and professors, but I needed to pay attention because when the quiz came, I failed miserably. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Number five, old habits or lifestyle resurfacing. You're going back to that same thing that easily besets you. That same thing, that pet demon that you know you should have walked away from. You should have walked away from him, honey. You should have walked away. Help us, Lord. Whoo, Jesus. Some things are toxic. Some things we have to walk away from. Yes. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Amen. Jesus. Help us, Lord. Jesus, he's saying he loved you, but he married to another woman. Come on, that's not in order. God's not going to send you a married man. Oh, he's fine. He married when his wife ain't in church. He's not for you. Come on, let's talk about it. We Christians, but we ain't fake. Amen? God sees my heart. I can be transparent. Can you be transparent? Amen? Amen. Woo, so old habits of lifestyle resurfacing. And number six, very important, pulling away from God. Pulling away from godly relationships. You stop calling the pastor. You stop coming to church. You stop coming to Bible study. You want to be a hermit. You want to be in a house. You don't want to come outside. You want to go to that bottle or that drug addiction or that porn addiction or that sex addiction. You want to go to that other thing that you think is going to satisfy your soul, but you always come up empty and short on your account balance. Mm, mm, mm. Help, us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Do we have any people here who like to take photography? Pictures? I got an artist in the room here today. Y'all don't know her. She may be a, a friend of mine, but a, a stranger to most. But she's sitting behind the bridge. She's a photographer. She's an artist. And she captures pictures. But I think that I'm an artist too. If you have an iPhone or, or an Android, do you take pictures? I take pictures. My daughter takes pictures. Well, guess what? You're a photographer, right? In your own right, amen? amen? So you see the friends, your friends are a photograph, a photograph of your future. Let me say that again. Your friends are a photograph of your future. Say it with me. Your friends are a photograph of your future. Jesus, Jesus. You see, if you have more in common with people of the world than you do with the people who serve Christ, you're not connected to the right people. You're not connected to the right people. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Going back to Acts 16, you see, divination is taken from a Greek word. I want to teach you something as I land this plane. Greek word, poop, which means python in the English word. That's why I wanted to educate about this python because it's in the Bible. Amen? In the English word, in, in the English word, in Isaiah 44, 25, God told us he hates diviners. Divination is also defined as the act of foretelling the future using supernatural means that is not from God, usually from occultic measures. Fortune telling, sorcery, card readers, I'm gonna speak to y'all too. It is not of God. Only God can tell you your future. Amen. The enemy will tell you about your past, but guess what? God will tell you about your future despite where you've been, where you came from, what it looked like. God will tell you about your future while the enemy's bringing about, well, look at your life now. Look at my life now, but look where I'm going because I serve a mighty king. Amen. Yeah. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And he gives me a sound mind. Amen. Amen. Yes. Is for nothing, he said. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And we may not always recognize these words in the Bible, and that's why we have to study these English words. You know, we have to study, you know, the Greek words. Sometimes, like I said, Putin. Jesus, Jesus. And the Bible translates the word ruha into all of these after mentions in the English words, which means that when we read our Bible, we might not always understand the Hebrew meaning, but we have to go back and study, amen? Yeah. Again, ruha is described as wind, spirit. And when you breathe, it's close to your heart. God says all 
issues flow from your heart. What you focus on, where your heart is, there your treasure is. So you do a self-evaluation and ask yourself, where is my heart? Where is my treasure at? Where am I going in life? Mm. Amen? Yeah. Jesus. I'm just going to give you some illustrate some Bible scriptures for you to study later concerning Ruha. This is Numbers 11.31, Exodus 10 and 13 for the sake of time. Uh, but also that spirit in Judges 6 and 34, 1 Samuel 16 and 14, and 1 Kings 18 and 12. And then in Job it's translated as breath. Okay? So in closing, I want to get ready to land this plane from a high altitude. And do you want the victory? Amen. Yeah. Do you want to overcome these battles? Yes. You want to be anxious, worried about things. No. We're not supposed to worry about anything. Amen? Amen. Not That's supposed right. to worry about anything. And there's no walk around the plane this time. Amen? Because we get ready to land this plane. All right? Everybody's went to the bathroom already. Amen? Amen. Get ready to land That's this right. plane. That's Amen? Right. Right. So at the end of scripture, we see Selah a lot in closing. And it means it's a time to reflect and pause and think. We see it a lot in Psalms. Selah. Well, relax. Pause. Think back on what the scripture just said. Right. Selah. Tell your neighbor, Selah. Selah. Jesus. Selah. Don't you feel relaxed when you say Selah? Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's the presence of the Lord. Amen. And the good news is, you want the victory. And I heard a pastor friend say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I heard a pastor friend say, that means it doesn't end here. It doesn't end here. We have another destination. This is not our home. We're just temporary ambassadors until we get to our destination. We're in a transfer flight right now. Amen? All right. You can experience victory today. You can have that experience today. Now, do you know him today in the pardon of your sins? Do you want to know him? today in the pardon of your sins. If today were to end, this is it, eyes closed, you walk out that door, just experienced a motorcycle accident, the man went in the air, and boom, it happened to be right there on the scene. He didn't expect that. Bones broken on the scene of young child.
you fail that class because you're supposed to go back and get something else or get someone and pull them along the way? God's timing, not our timing. You know him in the pardon of your sins. Are you ready to stop being disobedient? Stop being rebellious. God, forgive me for my sins. Because Jesus said on the cross, I heard my pastor friend said, Jesus said on the cross as he was on that rugged cross, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's us. As he was sacrificing to win the battle for us, he said, forgive them. So if that's you today, if that is you today, and you want to be forgiven, you want to repent of that attitude, that stinking thinking you have, you want to repent for just doubting God. Because doubting God is a sin too. God says every man has been given a measure of faith. Would that be you today? Right. time he puts you to sleep. You are in some type of um, conflict with the adversary. He's trying to get at you somehow if he can just rent that space in your mind. If he can rent some space in your mind, and that's why, um, based on what she shared with us on today, so Bible study is no longer suspended. It's off. It's back on. Starting this Wednesday, it's back on. Because I've come to find out that Amen. as she said, as she was preaching, I'm listening to her. When you leave God, when you leave him for whatever you leave him for, it never works out. That's it right. always messes up and you will fumble the ball. And you won't know how to respond to these trials and these testings when they come. Your mind has to be renewed because if you don't renew your mind, I'm telling you right now, you are in trouble. Because every chance that the devil can get to bring space in your head, he's going to do it because that's his job. He's a terminator. He yeah. came to steal, kill, and destroy, and that's his job. And so come on, clap your hands. Come on, step to your feet. Get ready to go. She preached her heart out even after going to the hospital and having upper respiratory. So we thank God for her being here, being here. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. thank you, Jesus. We thank God for Jacinda coming and giving us a praise and worship dance. Yeah. Yeah. Nova, Nova's been our, she's been our guest the whole time. Yeah. But anyway, so she's invited you. She's 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 given the invitation to open the doors of the church. And so, if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, this is your opportunity to make your peace with God. Because I'm telling you now, she just preached and said some important stuff. If you didn't remember anything that she said, if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, it's over. You you live down here. You might live good down here. You might have a good life down here. Joel Osteen says, living your best life, you know, so I don't know how you can live your best life in a sinful world when the world is, is spiraling straight to hell, is going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, uh, of course, we're looking for something more uh, pleasant and relaxing. So if you are right, you've made your peace with God, then we're going to ask that she would lead us in our benediction, lead us in a word of prayer. And we're going to close out and go home. Go somewhere. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for your opportunity for this moment, for your Ruhan. You all stand here today. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that none of this, none of this word falls on deaf ear, that it is fertile soil, oh God. And yes. that it plants and it takes root, oh God. Because he said, although we may be 